Hello guys, welcome back to my channel. It's your favorite esthetician. If you're new to my channel, welcome. My name is Amaka and today we're talking about AHAs and BHAs. We're comparing and contrasting. So if you're interested in this content, please keep on watching. <music> So what are AHAs and BHAs? Very short answer is they are chemical exfoliants. So things like your scrubs and you know cryosonic brushes, all those things are physical exfoliants. They involve using friction to remove dead skin. So what you are doing is using you know scrubs or a brush to brush out like dead skin. Whereas chemical exfoliants like AHAs and BHAs, what they do is they you know break down the bonds or sebum or lipids that are holding on to your dead skin and enable them to just, you know, on their own, you know, slug off. That's the difference between physical and chemical exfoliation. Let's now talk about the difference in, in the types of chemical exfoliations. Obviously, there are more chemical exfoliation. There's enzyme. It's enzyme chemical. Yes, enzyme is chemical. There's enzyme. There's polyhydric alcohol. There's, there's polyhydroxy acid, PHAs. But what are delving into that today? Today is AHA versus BHA. So yes, both of them are chemical exfoliants, and is it recording? Okay. So both of them are chemical exfoliants. Um, both of them obviously exfoliate the skin. Both of them can lead to a smoother, brighter, and more glowing skin. Because when you exfoliate your skin, obviously you're removing like photo damaged skin, you know, dull, dull skin cells, dead skin cells, resulting in just a yummy, glowy, and supple skin. Both of them, since they are exfoliating and thinning out the stratum corneum, both of them could lead to sensitivity of the skin and sensitivity as it, as it relates to exposure to sunlight and sensitivity to other ingredients or other products that are just used after them. You need your sunscreen game to be on point, especially when you are constantly exfoliating. Then too, you just have to be careful with both of them actually in products that you use with them so that you don't oversensitize your skin. So those are the similarities. Let's talk about the differences now. Salicylic acid is water, is oil soluble, meaning that it loves oil, it just embraces oil, it can be dissolved, it's soluble in oil, essentially, whereas AHAs are water soluble. Then BHAs goes into your pores and decongest your pores, whereas AHAs cannot do that because they are not oil soluble. And in your pores, as I explained in my video on BHAs, I put the link here, in your pores, you have sebum and you know your hair shaft sebum is oil essentially so AHAs can't get into there because it cannot like it's not soluble in oil AHAs go deeper into your skin so you, you know as I said that both of them exfoliate the surface of your skin salicylic acid or BHA I forgot one very important point when you think BHA you think salicylic acid when you think AHAs you think glycolic acid lactic acid mandelic acid um what's that one again those are the three like robustly studied ones which is that one again tartaric acid citric acid there are a lot of ahas however glycolic acid is the most effective it has the tiniest molecules and goes deeper into your skin in the same breath it's also the most irritating because it gets deeper into your skin than the rest of them the next one is lactic acid which has larger molecules and less irritating and also the second most well studied um aha then you have your mandelic and others I don't know why I, didn't, I forgot to say this thing. This was this should have been the first thing that I should have said before starting to talk about the similarities and differences. But it's fine. Whenever we say it, we say it. So, um, when did I even stop in differences? So, um, AHAs and BHAs, I explained that they exfoliate the surface of the skin. However, salicylic acid exfoliates the skin at the surface level. So, it just stays on the surface and exfoliates the skin. Whereas AHAs, especially glycolic acid, goes deep into the skin and starts exfoliating from the stratum granulosum, which is the third layer in the stratum corneum in the, in the epidermis. So your epidermis has different layers. Your skin barrier and the part we see is the stratum corneum that is made up of dense skin cells. After that, you have your lucidine, then you have the granulosum. In that layer, that's where your keratinocytes start to die and they start forming into dead skin cells. AHAs go to that level and start working. That's why when it comes to sensitivity, now both of them um, make you sensitive, but AHAs make you more sensitive because it goes deeper into your skin. Also, as it relates to irritation, even though both of them could, if overdone, could irritate your skin, you're more likely to get develop an irritation from AHAs than BHAs because of the way they work. They go deep into your skin and start working from there. Also, AHAs is also anti-aging. 
in very high concentration, especially the ones that are done in um, hospitals and clinics, aesthetic clinics, in high concentration can go as deep as the dermis to encourage and boost collagen production. And it does this by increasing the ground substance in the dermis. So in the dermis, you have the ground substance, you have elastin fibers, you have collagen. And, you know, the more ground substance you have, more collagen will be synthesized. Well, that's just how I can explain it for you to understand it. But anyway, it goes there and does that at very high concentration. Also, when it comes to the ability to work on your skin, BHAs rather are a lot more stable. They can even work in, studies have shown that they can work in high pH. It just gets there and gets the job done. Whereas AHAs are more complicated than that. You can get a, an AHA product in a leave-on form, in a wash-off form, and nothing is happening. For AHAs to work, the pH has to be right. It has to be low enough to enable there to be free enough acids to actually penetrate into the skin. If I were doing a video on pH, I made a video on pH, just that pH is very boring, honestly speaking. Ah, it's very boring to talk about, it's really, really boring, but I may do a video on pH. So AHA requires certain pH to actually, you know, function properly, nothing less than, it shouldn't be less than four on the pH scale for it to actually have enough um, free acid to get into your skin and get the, and get the job done. Whereas salicylic acid doesn't need all of that. It's just pretty sim really simple and straightforward. AHAs are also humectants. They help the skin attract water, whereas BHAs don't do that. Also, the required dose for over-the-counter AHAs is somewhere between 4 to 10%, whereas salicylic acid is 0.5 to 2%. To cut the long story short, both are exfoliant, um, Salicylic acid will be more attractive to people that, you know, have oily, acne-prone skin. Whereas people that have dry, dehydrated, and mature skin may be more tilted towards, towards AHAs. However, it doesn't really follow. It's all in the formation of the product. Like, you can, you can have oily skin and still benefit from AHAs. It doesn't matter. Although, people that have oily skin are more likely to tolerate AHAs than people that have dry skin tolerating BHAs. However, it all depends on the formulation of the products. Some products are formulated in such a manner that can be used by all skin types. Yeah, and we come to the end of this video. Um, I hope I answered, I clarified any confusion you may have as to what um, chemical exfoliant to incorporate in your routine. If you have more questions, if you have points that you want me to, you know, clarify more on, please leave a comment in the comment section and I would love to do that. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.